The following video is for entertainment purposes only. The scenarios presented within have been heavily edited and are neither complete nor meant to act as or in lieu of actual flight instruction. Consult a certified flight instructor for more information. Three shows in three states in three days and some serious weather to contend with. That's life in the fast lane. I'm John Weiswasser, pilot and drummer for Eagle Mania. Follow me as I explore the practical use of general aviation while I travel the country with the world's greatest tribute to the Eagles. This is Life in the Fast Lane. This trip involved three shows in three locations in three consecutive days, starting with the Flying Monkey Theater in Plymouth, New Hampshire on Friday night, the Cabot Theater in Beverly, Massachusetts on Saturday night, and a late afternoon outdoor show in Wheeling, Illinois on Sunday. What made it particularly difficult from a flight planning perspective was that I had between 11 p.m. on Saturday night to 3.30 p.m. or at the very latest 5 p.m. on Sunday afternoon to get myself, two of the guys, and a load of gear to Wheeling, which is just outside Chicago. Because of the quick turn and the distance, we couldn't just bring our trailer of gear and we had to rent the instruments and backline in Chicago. There's certain things we need for our show that you just can't rent, like double neck guitars, sample pads, our in-air monitoring system, and custom pedal boards. So it was up to me to bring all this, and the Meridian was definitely amazing, up to right? the task. It's, it's like an SUV. <laughs> the plan was to leave Friday afternoon from Caldwell, New Jersey, park the plane in Beverly, Massachusetts, drive to and from Plymouth, New Hampshire for the Friday night show, do the Saturday night show, then leave very early Sunday morning for Powaukee Airport with a fuel stop in Pontiac, Michigan for our 5.30 show in Wheeling and then return on Monday. I didn't fly to Plymouth because there really weren't any good airports nearby and the drive to and from Beverly was relatively short. Adding to the stress was the strong possibility of thunderstorms that Sunday afternoon in Chicago as well as along my route home Monday morning, which was borne out in the three and the two day long range outlook. So our first stop, was a small town about an hour and a half north of Boston, well into New Hampshire, called Plymouth. The Flying Monkey, and really, Plymouth, New Hampshire, are ground zero for what we do. The smaller and musically underserved the community is, the warmer the vibe is for us. And the Flying Monkey is a perfect example of this. The Eagles would never make a trip to the middle of New Hampshire, but that doesn't mean that there aren't major fans of their music here. This was your first, this it was at this theater, that was your first show with us. This spot right here, first song, first song I ever played on the stage in Eagle Mania right. was uh, Long Run. Right. Not only did I forget that there was words in the second verse, <laughs> I forgot there was a second verse. <laughs> you nailed it. So I stood Brother, there. you nailed it. <laughs> You nailed All I see is Ken, man. He looks over his first kick we've ever done together. Just got a little deal. Yes, it's working out fine. Yes, yeah, first place. You nailed this is it. Your first place. You know, this is yeah, the don't first. Don't you remember me forgetting the entire second verse? No. So as far as getting to Beverly Airport for these shows, the morning of briefing yielded marginal conditions in the observations with a forecast for improvement over the course of the day at both ends of the trip. This was due to a low pressure area moving offshore but centered over eastern Massachusetts. Next rad, just prior to departure, showed showery weather with no convection per se, and the graphical tap provided lots of nearby VFR options. 
The convective forecast was empty. The SIPFIP showed the possibility of moderate icing in the middle altitudes closer to my destination. Not really a worry given the inevitable early descent, and the turbulence forecast was benign. However, Pyreps a couple hours and then just before launching confirmed the presence of light rime in the middle altitudes along my route, so this was something to be prepared for. So, I went ahead and filed for a 12.30 in the afternoon departure. Along with us for this trip was Benny Harrison, a member of the Young Rascals and a key member of Felix Cavallari's band. Benny was subbing for Frank Marino, who had to take a few weeks off and was sorely missed. But Benny's an interesting guy. I had played with him a couple times with my friends Mark Hudson and Simon Kirk, and we had always talked about playing together at some point. So when this opportunity arose, well, he was the first guy I called. Delta Alpha IFR to uh, Beverly, Massachusetts. This was Benny's first time in a small plane, and certainly his first time up front. And it was fun introducing general aviation to someone who was clearly very interested. No matter where we went, he was calling out airplanes on the ramp and asking questions. He had an infectious enthusiasm for it, and it was great having him up front. Departure frequency is 119.2, and you'll get your squawk upon release. Okay, 929 Delta Alpha is cleared to Beverly. On departure, left turn heading 180. Radar vectors breezy as filed. 2000, 250 at 10, 119.2, squawk on release, 9 Delta Alpha. Meridian, 9 Delta Alpha, readback is correct, and advisor and ready to taxi with the current data. We'll call 9 Delta Alpha. And the area is clear. Fortunately, there was little time spent waiting for a release, and we were airborne quickly. Hey, we got 60 knots. Ah, uh, there we go. They're coming up. Nine Delta Alpha, fly runway heading, contact departure, safe play. Okay, over departure, nine Delta Alpha, so long. And uh, New York departure, ready in nine two nine Delta Alpha, one climbing, two runway heading. For nine two nine Delta Alpha, New York climbing, maintain six thousand, ident. Six thousand, ident, nine Delta. Alpha. Nine Delta Alpha, you're at a contact, you machine right breezy. Rick breezy, nine Delta. Alpha. Soon enough, we were cleared higher. If we're at fifteen thousand feet. And the outside temperature is minus four. Uh, we're picking up a trace amount of ice on the wings and the tail. So I have the stall heat and the prop heat on for IMC. We forecast icing between 15,000 and uh, 17,000 pretty much. And uh, there were some pilot reports of icing at 19. So it's all good. So we'll just keep an eye on that. After about 20 minutes, okay, it was time to start planning the arrival. Wind 36013 goes 20. Visibility 10. 2700 scattered. Ceiling 3400. Temperature 22, dew point 16, altimeter 2950. IFR aircraft expects RNAV approach arriving and departing room 34. And shortly after that, we were on the approach. Even when it's VFR, I like to shoot the approach. So this is the RNAV to 34. Be 2000 outside Crocker and then 1800 at Wassup. And the bottom is at 382. This is a climb, straight out climb to 2000 right Homux. I'm just talking to myself. All right. Nine Delta Alpha, turn right hitting 090. 090, 090 Delta Alpha. Zero, nine, zero, nine, zero, nine, Delta Alpha. And even though it wasn't IFR, I'm really nine, glad Delta, I Alpha, chose, chose to fly the approach. Delta Alpha, you might be able to see the field at 1 o'clock and 1 zero miles, and I, <laughs> you end up seeing it. Uh, we're IMC, 9 Delta Alpha. Right away. 9 Delta Alpha, turn right heading 150. 150, 9 Delta Alpha. You can see we are in and out of the clouds in the precip in what was very clearly marginal VFR. 9 Delta Alpha, turn right heading at 240. 240, 9 Delta Alpha. Delta Alpha flighting at 250. 250, 9 Delta Alpha. Red Lake 193, contact departure 133.0. 133.0, Red Lake 193. That's Boston, straight ahead. Oh, wow. 
39 Delta Alpha, turn right heading of uh, 310, four miles from Moose up, maintain 1,800, all established, unfound approach course, clear on that, 34 approach. Hey, 310, 1,800, all established, clear for the approach, 9 Delta Alpha. 39 Delta Alpha, contact Beverly Tower, 125.2. 25 Delta Alpha. Okay, gear's coming down. Give another 10. 9 Delta Alpha is still, uh, I guess, about two and a half mile final. 9 Delta Alpha, runway 34, clear to land, thanks. No problem, clear to land, 9 Delta Alpha. Beverly Tower, A119 Hotel on the downwind for touch and goes. Warrior A119 Hotel, runway 34, clear, touch and go. Clear, touch and go, 19 Hotel. Great landing. Thank you. After the round trip drive to Plymouth and the show with the Flying Monkey, it was a Saturday night at the Cabot Theater in Beverly, one of those beautifully restored large movie theaters on the outskirts of town, in this case, Boston. This was our second trip to the cabin. We were here last summer, and it's a good spot for us. We tend to try and avoid big cities in general because usually, if you can live there, you can afford tickets to the real thing. The cabin, however, is an exception. And this show was well attended and the crowd, as usual, very warm. Okay, now for the real challenge for this trip, getting to Chicago. I had made a decision earlier on Saturday that the trip was doable in 9 Delta Alpha, but like most things, it was all about timing. According to Winnie TV, it was going to be about getting there early. Matt, our guitar tech, and Dan, our front of house guy, had their long range forecast backstage at the Cabot as well. Yeah, we're gonna go there. We're gonna go there. We're all gonna get ready. And then we're gonna get really, really wet. <laughs> yeah, the possibility of the show getting canceled for inclement weather, I think, is pretty late. This was my overall plan. Wake up super early, fly the 560 miles and three hours from Beverly, Massachusetts to Pontiac, Michigan for quick turn fuel. Then launch from there to Powaukee, Illinois, a major Chicago reliever airport and about 10 minutes from the venue in Wheeling. That leg worked out to a little over an hour. Looking at the terminal forecast the night before, Boston looked fine and Detroit looked VFR. Chicago, on the other hand, was going to be tricky. Judging by the O'Hare terminal forecast, there was a window starting at about 9 or 10 in the morning, extending until about 3 or 4 in the afternoon, which should be free of convection. And I felt it was worth a shot, but only as long as there were good alternative options. Options like Fort Wayne, South Bend, Gary, or Milwaukee, which would enable us to drive and still make it by showtime. And that was good, because looking at the graphical forecast for the ceiling, as well as thunderstorm forecasts, those were not painting as rosy a picture. As far as icing and turbulence, nothing out of the ordinary given the possibility of convection. I don't fly in cumulus clouds when the outside air temperature is less than freezing. Sitting in my hotel room at five in the morning going over all this, here's what the next ride looked like. 
Again, the plan was to get as far as I could and then drive the rest if I landed short. And leaving super early afforded me that option given that we were scheduled to hit the stage at 5.30 p.m. Central. No, I think, I think what Dan said is, you know, the reality is that we're gonna get out there. Right. We're, we'll set up, it might rain, so right. it might get wet, but they're not gonna call the show until the very last minute. Right. Because nobody's gonna drop that kind of money to Right. Yeah, just can't that guy. Goes, uh, you know what? I don't think we should do this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no. no, that's not <laughs> not when you have not when you've got months of production involved in, in doing right. an outdoor show. So I persuaded the line guys at Beverly to meet us at 6.30 in the morning so that we could be airborne by 7 a.m. So very, very not rock and roll. But when I'm flying, this is how I roll. Delta Alpha, contact departure, have a good flight. Hey, we're departure, say so long. Boston departure, good morning, ready at 929 Delta Alpha, is with you, runway heading 1000, climbing 2000. Mooney sign, 929 Delta Alpha, Boston departure, ident, and climb maintain 5000. 5000 and ident 9 Delta Alpha. 9 Delta Alpha, your radar contact, one mile west of Beverly Airport, turn right, direct Highland. Okay, direct Highland, 9 Delta Alpha. After another hour or so en route to Pontiac, it was interesting to see how the weather had evolved. So this line of weather has significantly diminished. I think as it gets out over the lake, uh, the cooling of the lake actually diminishes the uh, amount of instability. So I think by the time we get there, this is just going to be a line of showers. And right now, it doesn't look like there is uh, any lightning in it, which is a sign that there's no convective activity, which is all good. So it's sort of, it's all behaving according to the forecast, which is it's, That's fantastic news. Yeah, so far so good. After another hour, we were on the approach into Pontiac in severe clear. 39 or Delta Alpha is 1-1 miles in Guzzi and cross Guzzi at or above 3,000, cleared on Avron, like 27 left approach into Pontiac. Okay, uh, Guzzi at or above 3,000, cleared for the approach 9 Delta Alpha. Nine Delta Alpha, contact Connie at Tower 120.5. Have a good day. 25, 9 Delta Alpha, so long. Pontiac Tower, uh, good morning. We're at 929 Delta Alpha is with you at Goodsby. Yeah. We're 1900 Delta Alpha, Pontiac Tower. You're uh, continuing bound off a sequence where you're closer in. And what's your type? Say a Meridian. Okay, I thought you said Eclipse. I was going to say that uh, doesn't want to show. I show Meridian. Thank you. Meridian 9 Delta Alpha, continue. We'll call 9 Delta Alpha. You're coming down. Melbourne 9 Delta Alpha, uh, Marine 9 Delta Alpha, Army 27 left, number one, cleared to land. Multiple aircraft pattern north runway. Okay, uh, we're looking and uh, clear to land, 27 left, 9 Delta Alpha. Minimums. Minimums. RV16 Tango Golf, ready 27 right, eastbound departure. RV16 Tango Golf, uh, we're dual towers, hold position, contact tower 123.7. You said you're in northeast departure? Affirmative, 6 Tango Golf. Roger, 237, sir. Set jet 572, we're going to left, line up and wait. Helicopter so to be right totally right. honest, I was in such a rush okay, to get in and out of there, and, and they were so top, efficient so at fueling us up that down. I completely neglected to get any footage of our brief interlude with Pontiac, Michigan, and in particular, the spectacular service of Pennistar. They literally had the fuel truck running and waiting for us as I shut down. A great FBO. I had to dry run the engine a little bit to get the ITT down to 140 degrees since it was such a quick turn. And very shortly after that, we were cleared for takeoff along pretty much direct routing. The weather had really improved from four hours earlier when I briefed it, and I was very confident at this point that we would have no trouble getting into Powaki and making the show on time. We were also able to get updates on the rest of the band, and it was interesting what had happened. 
The crew had to be at the venue by 10 a.m. in order to start setting up the rental backline and making sure that the monitoring systems were configured perfectly. The other half of the band, however, decided to leave a little later, 10 a.m. to be exact, in order to get some rest. The problem was that their flight was delayed because the airplane out of Chicago hadn't even left yet because of the severe weather in Chicago that morning. The irony was both terrible and wonderful. The general aviation option had bested the commercial carrier in terms of reliability this time. At the same time, the show was now in significant jeopardy because we didn't know if the rest of the band was even going to make it out there. Looking at the next rad, it was clear that the line of storms had completely dissipated as they moved east, following the forecast. Looking further out west, well past Chicago, you could see that stuff was starting to brew, and it was this that played the biggest role in the success of the day. Well, no sooner that we got to 28,000 feet that we, got, uh, we had to start our descent. What we're looking at right now is this area that uh, right here, which was the old storm um, that has now dissipated. On the ground in a half hour. Uh oh. All right, well, I suspect there's going to be ice, so I am putting the anti ice on. Ice usually happens at the top of the clouds. Yeah. But we're picking up some. Dallas 3960, contact Cleveland Center 126.75 sure. today. 2675, you have a great day, Scott. 3960. Center, any uh, reports of icing for 9 Delta Alpha? About an hour ago, we had some light rime at 19, but we haven't had a report recently. Okay, I'll give you a report for light to moderate, uh, minus 22, and uh, we're at 25,000. Light to moderate, what kind of ice at 20? Uh, light to moderate mixed at uh, flight level 250 and it's minus 22. Minus 22, thanks. Skylab 2998, maintain 300 knots or greater for sequencing, please. All right, I'll maintain 300 knots or greater for sequencing, Skylab 2998. Skylab 2998, you can expect that icing in the descent that traffic's in front of you by about 10 miles uh, a uh, Malibu. All right, thanks for that. Remember 9 Delta Alpha, are you out of the ice or no? Uh, affirmative for 9 Delta Alpha. Okay. Other than that brief encounter with some light icing, the trip to Chicago was uneventful. 9 Delta Alpha, you are four miles from Haigu, cross Haigu 2500 or above, you clear for the Air 916, straight in approach. Hey, uh, 2500 at Haigu, clear for the approach 9 Delta Alpha. 9 Delta Alpha, contact the Zygnus Tower 19-9. Before you go, uh, what is your aircraft type? Is that a Lux? It's a uh, Piper Meridian, uh, PA-46 Tango. Meridian, okay, very good. You can contact Tower 19-9, too. Over to Tower 9 Delta, no, 9 Delta Alpha, so long. I don't know what a Deluxe is. The controller in Pontiac thought I was an Eclipse jet. I get called a Mooney all the time, and I'm really not sure where Deluxe the confusion tower, comes Meridian, from. Meridian 9 Delta Alpha is Haigu. Meridian 929 Delta Alpha, Executive Tower, Terminal 2988, wind 150 at 6, number 2, runway 16, clear to land, safe parking. Okay, uh, clear to land, uh, 16, and uh, we're Hawthorne for 9 Delta Alpha. We're on, lights, flaps, gear down. 500. Minimums, minimums. You see that lake off to the right? That's where the venue is. All right. We left the airport and went straight to the venue to check on things. Amazingly, there had been no real technical issues. The gear we rented was spot on, and Eric, my drum tech, had set my drums up perfectly. They were literally identical to what I ordinarily use. The other technical aspects of the production were pretty much spot on as well. Even our in-ears were set at the levels we had them at the night before. The only problem was that half the band was still in Boston, and in an indefinite delay, it was clear at this point at least that we were likely not going to have a sound check.
Their flight finally left at 2 p.m. and they arrived at the venue at five, a half an hour before showtime. Nice you made it. Oh my Give God. me a hug, man. Let me oh, let me carry something yeah. for you. How late was your flight delayed? Oh my Christ! Three, what, what happened? One thirty-four. The equipment was uh, the radar went down and they had, had to, to redo the, the radar. Spot. The radar? Are you serious? And Today was like planes, trains, and automobiles. Okay, <laughs> right. But it's like, it's what happens. You know, we were supposed to be here. We were supposed to get a 10 o'clock flight. The flight was, uh, first it was delayed for like an hour and a half. Then it went from being 10 o'clock to 1.30-ish. Right. And uh, that's what it was. We kind of hung out in the airport. And right. then uh, plane finally came in and we get on the plane. First thing the pilot says is, oh, you know, the reason for the delay is that the, the radar failed on the airplane. So we... <laughs> <laughs> now look, and just as if on cue. Yeah, I know, I know, yeah. Literally as if on cue. Yeah, this is, uh, I've seen Twister a couple of times, I, I know yeah. <laughs> I know what to do. And as time wore on, it just began to look worse and worse. Hey guys, thanks for coming out. I am just letting you guys know, we will be starting a little bit later just because you want to wait for some of the rain to kind of pass. Uh, just so you know, our rule of thumb is when we see lightning, this is not a severe weather shelter. Well, I can answer that question. It's really amazing how useful for flight is. More drama. We do it because I'm all over this. Well, well here we are. Waiting for the rain to pass, hoping we don't get a tornado. Sometimes this happens with these outdoor shows. We're all here on time, which right. is a good thing. Which is amazing, right? Amazing. It's amazing that it all worked out. It didn't quite all work out. At T minus 15, the show was canceled and it was purely a matter of preserving our gear. After the disaster that wasn't, it was time to start planning the trip home. I knew from the long range forecast that there was going to be the possibility of convection as the day wore on and the atmosphere heated up. The surface observations early that morning were marginal at Powaukee and VFR at Caldwell. Forecasts gave more reasons to leave early, with Chicago reporting the possibility of storms at 10 a.m. Teterboro, however, was good VFR all day, but I knew that this was likely to change. The icing forecast demonstrated the potential for moderate icing, likely in the high-reaching cumulus clouds at the middle altitudes that was extending eastward as the day progressed. Turbulence was little less of a concern. There were, however, already pilot reports in large, heavy aircraft that were reporting light rime icing anywhere from flight level 210 to flight level 270 along my route of flight. The graphical thunderstorm forecast had the good possibility of scattered storms across much of eastern Ohio and western Pennsylvania starting early in the day and getting worse over the early afternoon. And here's the next ride that morning as I left the hotel. Never mind the route line or the waypoints, I hadn't updated the flight plan on my foreflight on my laptop. The plan was to fly directly from Palwaukee to Caldwell with enough fuel reserve to deviate to the south round weather if necessary and land with 300 pounds of fuel or about an hour in the tanks in good VFR. The forecasted westerlies are what made it possible to do this leg without a fuel stop and all this gear. As usual, the Meridian proved capable. Having the flexibility to leave whenever I want, I had everyone up super early in order to lower the chances of an encounter with convection, which is always worse in the afternoon as the day heats up. So with Ken up front this time, we departed uneventfully out of Powaukee into marginal conditions and some light rain, and we were soon given a climb up to our filed altitude of flight level 270. Delta Alpha, turn left heading 050 now. 050, nine Delta Alpha. Area 9 Delta Alpha, contact Chicago departure. Chicago departure, 9 Delta Alpha. November 30, Bravo, climb maintain 11000, one, 35, 2035. 2035, great day, now 1161. Yeah. Departure, good morning, ready at 929 Delta Alpha with you at 2.3, climbing 4000, 050. Area 9 or 29 Delta Alpha, Chicago, over all 200 to 964. 649 Delta Alpha. Having the flexibility to adjust departure times to adapt to the weather is, in my opinion, the greatest tool to deal with weather. Seven, 
question. That's the shit that we're going to have to avoid. While it didn't look daunting at all on the next rad, my concern um, was that it would start to blossom as time went on. Yeah, so, you know, the plan will be, we'll see what's there. We'll see, it'll probably by the time we get there, it'll have developed a little more. Either there'll be a, a nice visual route through that, or we'll just have to deviate to the south. And if we have to deviate south, be, you know, down towards Johnstown, right. depending on what's going on. Uh, there's been reports of Sky icing, is, uh, icing over there at this climbing, altitude, which, trees, which suggests to me that it's probably Sky be avoided. A little while later, we got a reroute. They, uh, originally had us on routing that would have taken us straight, uh, but pretty much just to the southern edge of this yellow stuff, uh, the tops of which are reported at flight level 240. And uh, they ju I asked them if uh, we could stay at this altitude of 270 to top it before they descend us. And they very nicely gave us uh, routing now that's much more direct. And not only that, more importantly, it takes us through the southern edge of this, which is a little bit more sparse. So that's all good. You can see it up ahead, sort of a high stratus, strato cumulus. That's all good. I think we'll get home on time. I promised we'd get home today. Okay, we've started uh, our descent, and uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to pick up some ice in these clouds. Commander Delta Alpha, contact New York Center, 128.57. 12857, 9 Delta Alpha. New York Center, uh, good uh, morning. Ready at 929 Delta Alpha is out of uh, flight level 260 for flight level 190. 929 Delta Alpha, New York Center. United 1812, cross Hay to flight level 190. See it? Yes, it is. Yeah. Flight level 190, United. That was easy enough. It was really easy. <laughs> it was thin. All right. The rest of the trip was uneventful, and we were soon on the RNAV into Caldwell. Terminated contact Caldwell Tower 119.8. Have a good day. Yeah, okay, over to Tower 9 Delta Alpha. Take care. Call Tower Birdie and 99 Delta uh, Alpha is with you inside Dowdy. Delta Alpha Caldwell Tower. Caldwell Terminator 29er 89er. Next report spare, runway 22. Hey, Wilco 9 Delta Alpha. Ready 9er Delta Alpha number 2, following Cessna traffic on a 1 mile final. Wind 210 at 6, runway 22, clear to land. Clear to land 22, 9 Delta Alpha. Okay. Manual, manual, lights. Three, Romeo, one, uh, one, one more report, notch of flaps, three, 3 in the green. Roger, and uh, we are completely depressurized. And that concluded our three-day mini tour. It could have so gone a lot worse. The GA option really only works dependably, in my opinion, when there's time, flexibility, and options. And while I didn't really have to exercise any of those options, some super early mornings made that possible. So until next time, thanks for watching Life in the Fast Lane. Okay, left done Delta over to ground nine Delta. Coming up next on Life in the Fast Lane. All yours. Some easy flying. You know what? There's a, there's a good side and a bad side to that. When to it's one of our best of audiences. Crowd, fact, yeah. A couple of fist fights here. Yes, that's show true. Show at an Eagles you know? as it at an Eagles tribute show. Yeah, I right. think it was in the middle. Peaceful, easy feeling, which makes no sense. <laughs> in the heart of Virginia. Welcome to Life in the Fast Lane.